Now we're going to talk about resistance heating. Resistance heating is going to be very important when we run out of natural gas. Uh, most homes or many homes are heated with natural gas which is a very powerful, lots of heat inside of it because it's a hydrocarbon. So when we need to switch to electricity for heating, uh, I want to give you guys an idea of the different types of space heaters and why it is that some people make mistakes with them. Well, here's an equation to begin with. Here are some new parameters. These are electrical engineering parameters. Voltage times current equals power. Now, what I do, I've always, I've always remembered voltage and current because I've made a mental transformation in my mind to, to a physical world, to a mechanical world. And let me just share that with you so that maybe you can use this to remember voltage and current. The way I remember voltage is I look at it as the height of a waterfall. And the higher the waterfall, the more voltage. And if water is to fall off a high waterfall, the more power. So, voltage being the height of the waterfall, current being the water falling over it. So, if you have a lot of water flowing over your waterfall, you have a lot of power. And conversely, if you have no current flowing over the waterfall, you have no power. Now, in the house, in your house, the wall plugs have 120 volts of 120 volts in them. And the uh, automobile, the battery of an automobile, has 12 volts in it. So there's a lot of difference in the height of a waterfall between a house and a car. Now also in the house you have circuit breakers that are rated at either 20 amps or 15 amps. And this is the threshold but at which you if you draw too much current the fuse box or the circuit break breaker will trip and that will disconnect electricity to your device. So when people build heating devices like toasters or um, hair dryers or space heaters, they tend, to, they tend to design them around 10 amps. So if we take voltage times current, 120 volts times 10, amp, 10 amps, we have 1200 watts. And hair dryers often list uh, the part number on the side, which is the wattage, 1200 watts, which is m m basically the most you can have on a heating device and not uh, blow, blow a fuse. Okay, now, in the area of space heaters, people often make a mistake. Now, there are three types of space heaters. Conductive, convection, and radiant. Now, conductive space heaters uh, are usually tall and large, and they look kind of like regular radiators. And the thing that's kind of unique to them is they're not hot to the touch. Uh, when you plug them in, often you don't think they're working because they, they give off heat slowly. And they have large surface areas and they stand tall, which means you get a chimney effect, which is how the, how the air is circulated around this. Warm air on the side of the, of the fins starts to rise and more, wear, more hot air is picked up and eventually you have hot air rising up along the uh, device and 
flowing around the room even there's even though there's no pump there's no fan it it actually uses the chimney effect to circulate air around the room once again warm it's not you don't have you're not going to be burned by it and it you, conductive means that it touches the actual air and slowly flows um, atom by atom out now this is a very slow process it's good for warming a room now convection uses a fan and what happens here is the heating element is turned up so it's smaller in size than this very large radiator sized device you turn the you have a hotter filament you make sure that's protected from uh, from the from touch and you you run a fan across it and it blows hot air at the source also warming the air as it travels through it this one often is rotating back and forth to heat a, a range but it is a hotter filament you have to be protected from the touching it and a fan convection means moving air now the one that gives people the most trouble is radiant and radiant heating is different than conductive and convection because it doesn't have to travel through a medium these actually travel through air they heat the air as they move this one is like sunlight it can travel through a, a they can travel through a, a vacuum and what happens here is the heating element is very small often something like a ceramic way smaller than this way small way way smaller than this and it gets hot up to like 700 degrees way way hot this now radiant heat is is uh, governed by an equation which is called t to the fourth temperature to the fourth power and that's a fancy way of saying temperature times temperature times temperature times temperature and my son asked how can you multiply temperature by temperature times temperature by temperature and i explained to him that it's a way of saying that if you get a big number then it gets multiplied by itself gets larger and larger and larger and that is the secret to radiant heating is you get a really high element and then you put a parabola on the back and this thing is shooting out radiation heat radiation and it's coming along and hitting this parabola and going straight towards the person so you have heat hitting the back straight at the person and then you have heat going from the front in a very various, various directions but you're able to put a lot of heat on an object now this if you want fast heat and very warm this is the one to go with because it will it'll put heat on you rapidly at a high temperature so this one is the fastest at feeling heat this one is medium and then this one is very slow now the thing that I want to make sure everyone knows is that these three devices all produce the same amount of heat in the long run this one seems fast and seems the most powerful people say you know get a radiant heater it's the most amazing but all three of these are simply running at 1200 watts so if you put these three heaters in three rooms three different rooms all the same starting condition same temperature same volume of room and you turn them on you leave them there they all will do their thing conductive convective and radiant and the rooms in the end will be at the same temperature because even though these guys are using different techniques of moving the heat they're all at 1200 watts so there's no amplification of a radiant heater or over a conductive heater or convective when it comes to total heat output the difference is in how it feels to you at whether it's blowing on you or aimed at you or just slowly heating the room so resistance heating is going to be a big thing in the future when natural gas disappears and the the power companies are going to have to pick the extra load up for this because this is you know at the, at the power level of an air conditioner which we know causes them to turn up their capacity as if it's three o'clock in the afternoon and we're running um, air conditioners so that's radiant heating and i hope you learn from it